the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, for the past two weeks now, the Gildersleeve household has had a new look, and also a few new sounds. Yes, the little mystery baby that someone left in the great Gildersleeve's car is practically a member of the family now. And the great man is behaving very much like a proud father. Oh, hello there, little girl. Kitchy, 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 coo. You're cute. They haven't found your mother yet, baby, but don't you worry. We'll take good care of you until they do. And I've got a surprise for you. We're going to take your picture today. I'm going down to Peavy's and get some film right now. Would you like to have your little picture taken? Ooh, she called me Daddy. Oh, good morning, Phoebe. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> and what is your pleasure? I want to roll a film for my brownie. All right. Going to take the baby's picture. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I want to get a picture before she gets too big. I've never seen a baby grow so fast. Why, she gained half an ounce yesterday. I don't see. Well, here's your film. Just charge it, please. I want to hurry up and get these pictures taken. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, would you like me to load the camera for you? Load it? Oh, I guess I can do it. Well, there's no extra charge. Part of our friendly service. Oh, all right. You can probably do it faster than I can. Well, it's a very simple operation. You merely open the back lid, then pull out the inside. Seems to be stuck. Oh, I forgot to pull out this little do-jigger on the side. Peavy, will you hurry it up a little, please? As I say, it's a very simple operation. You pull it out like this. Now we're ready to put in the film. Good. First, we take the film out of the package. That's a good idea. Now, according to instructions, we insert this little tab in spool A. Now, which one is spool A? Peavy, hurry up, will you? You know the sun goes down at 5 o'clock. Let's see here. Now, this one could be spool A. Oh, for goodness. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Pinkney. What can I do for you? I just want a tube of toothpaste, please. Very well. Peavy, I was here first, and I'm in a hurry. This will just take a moment, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, what size tube did you want, Mrs. Pinkney? What sizes do you have? Well, there's the small, medium, and large economy size. Small, medium, and large economy size. That's right. Small, medium, and large economy size. Small, medium, love. Why doesn't he hurry up? Uh, Mr. Peavy, what's the difference between them? <laughs> well, one's small, one's medium, and one is rather large. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. Peavy, if you'll just give me back my film, I'll load the camera myself. Just a moment, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, what size did you want, Mrs. Drinkney? Well... I don't know. Uh, what size toothpaste do you use, Mr. Peavy? I use tooth powder myself. Ye <laughs> oh, gods. Oh. Well, what sizes does the tooth powder come in? Oh. Well, that comes in three sizes, too. Small, medium, and large. Oh, yes. Would you like some tooth powder? Well, uh, I just can't make up my mind. I think I'll just let it go now and stop in on my way home. Good day, Mr. Peavy. Good day, Mrs. Pinkney. Thank you, and call again. P. 
TV give me that film, I'll load the camera myself. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve, if you want to. I never saw anyone as slow as you. PV, do you know what you are? You're an old turtle. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> I wonder what's the matter with him. All right, Marjorie. Now try to hold the baby still now. And look at the camera. You too, baby. Hurry up. Take it, aren't you? Now, just a moment now. Let me look in here. Oh. Marjorie, move down one step. I've got your head cut off. All right. That's it. Now hold it. <laughs> I got it. Well, how about taking my picture now, huh? Not now, Leroy. I want to get a few more of the baby first. Okay. Hold still, Marjorie. Hold still, baby. <laughs> Look at the birdie. That was a good one. Now, let's get one of the baby on the lawn. Put her on the blanket, Marjorie. All right. Oh, aren't you going to take one of me now? Not now, Leroy. And move back. You're throwing a shadow on the baby. Oh, for corn's sake. All right, baby. A big smile now. Look at Birdie. Look at the Birdie. You me? <laughs> no, Birdie. All right, baby. Hold it now. Now, this time, let's try one of the babies sitting up. Unc. Huh? You said you were going to take my picture. I got all dressed up, combed my hair and everything. Oh, well, all right, Leroy. Where do you want me to stand? Over here by the porch? That's all right, I guess. I'll just kind of lean against the railing like this. Do I look okay? Mm-hmm. Is my tie straight? Yes. Okay, I'll uh, shoot it. Oh, I can't, Leroy. Huh? Why not? I see. I have just one film left. I want to get a picture of the baby lying on her stomach. A baby, the baby. Everything's a baby. Oh, you're just jealous. I am not. You are, too. Now, Leroy, we've got a whole album of you... But if you insist, I'll take your picture. You don't have to. I don't want my old picture taken anyhow. That's sissy stuff. You don't have to take my picture. Okay, I won't. Huh? You won't take my picture! Oh, I give up. take you fishing. You wouldn't catch anything anyhow. <laughs> Uncle, do anything for me. Oh, Leroy. Yeah? I want to ask you something, my boy. Sure, what is it? Well, Bertie and I were talking it over and we decided the baby ought to sleep in your room. What? Well, it's the sunniest room in the house and the baby needs a lot of sun, you know. I'm not going to sleep in the same room with a baby. That's right, we're moving you into the sewing room. <laughs> sewing room? We'll fix it all up for you. You can move your pennants and your little radio and your turtle. I'm not going to sleep in the sewing room. Now, Leroy. Why can't the baby sleep in there? I told you, she needs the sunshine. What about me? I need sunshine, too. You've got enough freckles now. You'll be all right in the sewing room. What you care? All you care about is a baby. Now, that's ridiculous. I don't have to sleep here at all if you don't want me to. What? I'll move. What are you talking about? I'll move out in the backyard 
in my clubhouse. Now, Leroy. Yes, I will. Well, I don't think you'll be very comfortable out there in that old packing box. I don't care. I'm going to live out there forever. Well, in that case, we'll forward your mail. <laughs> well, I'm going to get my things and move right now. All right. Drop in and see you sometime. Let the baby have my room. I don't care. I'll never come back. Leroy. Yeah? Before you move out there forever, better take off your good suit. <laughs> uh, kids. Well, Bertie, how's supper coming? Just about done, Mr. Gilsleeve. Mmm, smells awfully good. Mr. Gilsleeve, don't you think you ought to get Leroy in now? What? Is he still out in that clubhouse? Yes, sir. He's been out there all afternoon. Said he wasn't never coming back. Well, I remember I ran away from home once when I was a kid. I wasn't ever coming back either. But I was back at the table by supper time. <laughs> yes, but you got a big appetite than Leroy. <laughs> 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 all right, Bertie, I'll go out and get him. That's good. Grab your toes and get your hat, leave your worry on the door. Well, there's his little clubhouse. <laughs> What's that sign on it? Beware. Headquarters of the Black Hands. <laughs> Black Hands, huh? That's Leroy, all right. Wonder what he's doing in there. Leroy! Are you in there, my boy? Leroy! guess he's pouting. suppose I'll have to go in there. How do you get in there? Looks like they've got it dug out. That's the only way to get into that little tunnel. Could have made this hole a little bigger. Now if I can just get my stomach in. Glad I'm doing this before supper. Oof. Dark in here. What's that? Is that you, Leroy? Oh, a cat. Kitty, one of us will have to get out of here. Go away now. Scat. Now, well, if I can get. Uh, I made it. Oh, hello, Leroy. Leroy, aren't you going to say hello to your old uncle? Hello. Nice little place you got here. Oh, my head. <laughs> Could be a little roomier. <laughs> Leroy, it's supper time. I know. Bertie's got roast beef, and she made an apple pie just for you. <laughs> I'm not hungry. Huh? We're all waiting for you in there. Marjorie, Bertie, me, and the baby. I mean me. I won't come in. Now, Leroy, we mustn't be stubborn. I won't come in. That's a fine way to act. After your old uncle went to all this trouble and crawled in here to get you. I won't come in. Ye gods, can't you say anything else? I won't come in. All right, then. Don't come in. I can be just as stubborn as you can, young man. You can just stay out here and you get good and tired of it. I'm going in. Oh! <laughs> How did I ever get through here in the first place? Oh, my goodness. I'm stuck. <laughs> Ooh, the cat's back again. Kitty, go away. Kitty. Help, Leroy. I won't come in. Oh, for... Kitty, stop licking my face. Kitty, that tickles. <laughs> we'll join the great Gildersleeve again in just a minute. Now, I'd like some help from Bertie. Bertie? Yes, Mr. Wall? Let's see if I can say everything about parquet in 30 words or so. Mm-hmm. Parquet is a grand food to eat. It costs about half as much as the most costly spreads. Yet it gives you all of their nutrition. That's the way you see it. That ain't the way I see it. Anyway, Bertie, that's the way I'd that say I... it just plain tastes good. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, you'd be right about that. Parquet is prepared like a rare luxury food. Only selected products of American farms are used in making it. That's why parquet has such a sweet, light flavor, whether you spread it on waffles or biscuits, pancakes or bread. That's the way you say it, ain't the way I say it. But, Bertie... Tastes 
so good. That's what I'd say. It tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, friends, there's one thing Bertie and I completely agree on. We'd like you to try Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Because <laughs> it tastes like it should cost twice as much. <laughs> Well, the Hatfields and the McCoys have nothing on Leroy and the great Gildersleeve. The family feud is still on. It's evening now, and the Gildersleeve family, all except Leroy, that is, is just finishing a quiet dinner. Uncle Mort, will you pass the cream, please? Uncle Mort. Huh? Oh, oh, the cream? Yeah, here you are. Thank you. Unky. Yes? Don't you think you and Leroy are acting pretty silly? Well, he's acting pretty silly. I'm not. Uncle Mort? Well, he is. He must be awfully hungry by now. Why don't you go out and talk to him? I did once, my dear. He's just being stubborn, that's all. Oh, but I know he'd come in now if you'd ask him. No, absolutely not. If he wants to sit out there and soak, I'll... I'll get it, Bertie. That's the judge. He insisted on coming over to play checkers tonight, the old goat. Well, come on. Oh, Craig, what do you want? Leroy? Why, uh, what do you want him for? My mother said I could play for an hour. Where's Leroy? Well, you can't see him right now, Craig, so run along. I will not. Come on now, get your foot out of the door. I will not. You little pest. Go on home now, Craig. It's Betty by time. It is not. Why can't Leroy come out and play? Because he can't, that's why. You're mean to Leroy. What? You won't let him come out and play. Now, look here. You're a mean man and you're fat, too. Oh, <laughs> You get out of here. You mean you're fat and you walk like a duck. I do not. I mean get out of here. Yes, you do. You walk like a duck. You get out of here and don't come back. Quack, 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 quack. Beat it. Quack, quack. Scram. Quack. You little... Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> Only Bullard could raise a kid like that. Walk like a duck. That's ridiculous. I think. <laughs> Oh, he's back again, is he? Why, that little... I walk like a duck, do I? What? Oh, hello, Judge. <laughs> Why, you don't walk like a duck, Gildy. You walk more like a baby elephant. <laughs> Come on in, you old goat. Thank you, I will. See, you're just finishing dinner, Gildy. Got your napkin tucked in your vest. Yes, sir. Now go right ahead and finish, and then we'll have an exciting checker tournament. Good evening, Marjorie. Good evening, Judge. How is our sweet little baby girl tonight? Oh, she's fine. She's up in Leroy's room, Judge. You moved Leroy out of his room? Well, it was sunnier for the baby. Oh, I see. Where's Leroy? Out in the packing box. Shh! Packing box? What's he doing out there? Well, he and Unky had a quarrel. Now, Marjorie, it isn't necessary to go into that. He won't come in to supper. I wanted Unky to go out and get him. I'll handle this, my dear. Gildy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself leaving that boy out there without his supper. I'll thank you to keep out of this, Hooker. You're supposed to have more sense than Leroy. Although sometimes I doubt it. So if I were you, If I, I were you, I'd mind my own business. Well, yeah, that's the way you feel. I won't stay here and play checkers with you. Good. I'm going home right now. Don't stop to eat any tin cans, you old goat. And don't you eat any peanuts, you baby elephant. Oh, Hooker. Good night. Old Budinsky. Well, gotta go finish my coffee. Probably cold by now. Uh, uh, uh. Uncle Moore. Yes? I bet Leroy'd come in now if you could. Marjorie! That's the last I want to hear about this. The matter is closed. Terminated. Or as they say in French, finis. In other words, I forbid any further conversation on the subject. Okay. The idea, a man can't even have... Yes, please. Yes, Bertie? Don't you think you ought to go out and call Leroy now? What? Poor little fellow sitting out in that packing box. Must be awful hungry by now. Bertie, the subject is closed. Now, I want you to m never mention Leroy's name again tonight. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Did you have plenty to eat, Mr. Gilsey? Yes, I did, Bertie. Thank you. Plenty of roast beef, mashed potatoes, cornbread, and apple pie? Yes, Bertie, thank you. I'm full of food. Well, I know somebody who ain't. Huh? But I won't mention his name. Now, Bertie. Yes, sir. 
This somebody ain't had roast beef, mashed potatoes, cornbread, and apple pie. And he ain't had nothing to eat, but I won't mention his name. Bertie, I told you. I won't you. mention his name, but I'll give you a hint. He's a little fellow, about 12 years old, sitting all alone in a packing box, but I won't mention his name. Now, I said that. Now, I know you can guess who it is, but I'll tell you one thing it ain't the walking man. Bertie? It ain't the <laughs> Bertie? No, sir. It's somebody we all know. And he ought to be in here right now eating roast beef, mashed potatoes, cornbread, and apple pie, but I won't mention his name. <laughs> Time to go to bed. Why doesn't that boy come in? Wonder if he's all right. He's a little chilly out. Maybe I ought to... No. I asked him to come in once. If he wants to be stubborn and stay out there all night, let him. Won't hurt him. When I was a kid, I slept outdoors on colder nights than this. I kept warm. Of course, I was a little fatter. <laughs> Well, I'll go to bed, I guess. No use waiting up any longer. No, I'll just... wonder who that is. Hello, Trockmorton. Eve, well, come in. Thank you. Well, Eve, I haven't seen you for a long time. You're looking wonderful. Thank you. How was your vacation? Oh, like all vacations, a little too short. Throckmorton, I hope you don't mind my dropping in so late. Mind? Not at all. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, well, well. I suppose you're the busy little principal again with school starting. Oh, yes, I am. In fact, I'm just on my way home from a teacher's meeting now. Uh, Throckmorton, I understand you have a little addition to your family. Yeah, wonderful little baby girl. She's asleep right now. And there's no news of the mother yet? No, we haven't heard a word. Isn't that a shame? Well, it's very nice of you to look after this baby. Oh, I don't mind. In fact, it's a pleasure. Funny how quick you can get wrapped up in a baby like that. Mm -hmm. I spend all my spare time with her. Yes. Throckmorton. Yes? There's something I wanted to talk to you about. What's that? Well, it's Leroy. Uh, Leroy? <laughs> yes, one of his teachers told me tonight he's been acting sort of moody and touchy. Have you noticed it? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, it's perfectly natural for him to act this way. Young people usually do when there's a new child brought into the home, like this baby you found. Uh, new child? Yeah. Children are apt to be a little jealous. Sometimes they think they're losing their parents' love. They do? Mm-hmm. That's why you have to be especially tactful at a time like this. Be careful not to neglect them or show any preference for the new child. Of course, I know you wouldn't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> you wouldn't make Leroy feel he wasn't wanted. You're too intelligent. I am? I mean, oh, sure. <laughs> Certainly. You know, some parents misinterpret the child's attitude. They think he's just sulking or being stubborn. Sometimes the child's whole life is affected. A boy who feels he's unwanted may easily become a juvenile delinquent. Huh? Yes. In some cases, they even turn out to be criminals. Gangsters. Gangsters? But we don't have to worry about Leroy. Of course not. Well, it's late. I'd better be going. It was nice seeing you again. Oh, thanks, Eve. Nice to see you. Doc Morton. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure Leroy will be all right. I know you'll remember the children are human beings, too. Good night, Throckmorton. Good night, Eve. Poor little Leroy. Why didn't I understand it? I could have ruined his whole life. I could have made him a gangster. Leroy! Are you there? He's gone. Pa, 
probably out robbing a bank. <laughs> yeah, and it's all my fault. Hi, Up. <clears throat> Leroy, you all right? Sure. I was asleep. Leroy, you're not going to be a criminal, are you? Huh? Um, nothing. Are you hungry, my boy? No. Bertie brought me some dinner. I had roast beef, mashed potatoes, cornbread, and apple pie. Well, uh, that's good. Hope you weren't too cold out here. I'm no, okay. Bertie brought me some blankets, too. Bertie's certainly been busy. Uh, Leroy. Yeah? I'm sorry I lost my temper. You know, sometimes your old uncle is a little thoughtless. But he doesn't mean to be. That's all right, Uncle. I'll be okay in the sewing room. Yeah, thanks, Leroy. Well, how about coming in the house now? You'll go to bed. Oh, can't I stay out here tonight, Unc? What? Sure, this is lots of fun. And I'll tell the kids tomorrow I slept in my clubhouse all night. Well, all right, if you want to, my boy. Leroy, I just thought of something. How about you and me going fishing Saturday all by ourselves? Gee, that'll be swell. Just the two of us? Sure. We men folks have got to get off by ourselves once in a while, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we have lots of good times together, Leroy. Well, go to sleep now, Leroy. Good night, Uncle. Good night, my boy. Yeah. Good night, Kitty. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Just one taste will tell you. Just one taste of a hot biscuit topped with parquet, and you'll know that this margarine is prepared like a rare luxury food. For parquet tastes like a luxury. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. Parquet is nutritious and economical. Though parquet costs only about half as much as the most costly spreads, it gives you every bit as much nourishment and it's fortified with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Tomorrow, get Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet margarine made by Kraft. You'll love its delicate flavor on everything from waffles to toast. Because Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. <laughs> Leroy, are you asleep? Huh? Oh, oh, hello, Aunt. What are you doing out here? Is it morning already? No, it's only 2 a.m. What's the matter? Well, haven't been able to sleep, Leroy. Why not? Baby's been crying quite a bit. Keeps waking me up. Uh, Leroy. Yeah? There's room for both of us in this packing box. <laughs> Move over. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, B. Benaderet, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Me too. Good night. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a suggestion to every homemaker. It's how to cut the cost of main dishes. Be a smart menu maker. Cook with cheese often. Cheese prices have come down. And cheese is a protein food, a main dish food. Actually, ounce for ounce, there is no other basic food that matches cheese for high quality, complete protein, for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. And Kraft's varieties of pasteurized processed cheese cook perfectly. There's medium mellow Kraft American and sharp old English. Or for rich yet mild cheddar flavor, get Kraft's delicious cheese food, Velveeta. To help balance your food budget, serve thrifty golden cheese main dishes often. This is NBC.